For children who progress from primary 4 to primary 5, one of the changes that they will face in English will definitely be the additional component of situational writing. So what exactly is situational writing? We thought it would be a good idea to just share with you so that you can have a better understanding of it today. So firstly, situational writing is actually found in paper 1 of the English examination. So together with continuous writing, these two papers will actually take out 1 hour and 10 minutes. So how should you allocate your time? Out of this 1 hour or 10 minutes, it's usually encouraged that the child spends no more than 20 minutes on situational writing. In fact, if you can complete this writing in 15 minutes, that will be even better because you'll have more time to spend on your continuous writing. Next, for situational writing, the number of marks that you carry is actually 15 marks. So there will be 6 marks allocated for content and 9 marks allocated for language. So in total, it adds up to 15 marks. So the question is, is it possible to actually score full marks for situational writing? And the answer is yes. Compared to continuous writing, which should be rather challenging for it to score a full 40 marks, situational writing is actually a component which many children will find it possible to score the full 15 marks. As long as you have a clear understanding of the requirements, you definitely will be able to do so. Now, let's talk about how we are going to score this 15 marks in total. For content, which takes up 6 marks, you first will need to understand what will be the P, A, C and also W that's required of you for your piece of writing. So what exactly is the P, A, C and W? Firstly, P stands for purpose. So the purpose is the reason why you're writing the letter, the email, so on and so forth. So look out for words like to inform someone, to invite a guest speaker perhaps, to complain about a service you received. Next. A stands for the audience. An audience basically means the person you're writing to. Then we have C, which is basically context. So the context means whether this letter should be formal or informal, and it will tell us the tone that we need to have when we are writing. So whether you should be formal or informal, it depends largely on the audience. If you write to someone whom you're close to, for example, like a friend or a family member, then likely you'll be using the informal tone to write to them and it'll be like a friendly letter. However, if you're writing to someone whom you're not close to or has some sort of power or authority over you, then this will most likely be a formal piece of writing. So some examples could be to the principal or it could be to perhaps the manager of a store. Finally, you have W, and W actually stands for Writer. Now in school, some teachers may not actually explicitly state W for the pupils to take note of. However, at Luba Mighty, we always believe that W is super important, and that's why we include it together with the PAC to form PAC and W. So whether you're writing as someone with a given name in a question, or you're writing as yourself, it's crucial that you pick that out. So as long as you understand the PACW and you apply it accurately, plus you find out the content points that you're supposed to answer as stated in the question, you should be able to score the 6 points for content. Then the language takes up 9 points. And in order to actually achieve these 9 marks, you need to make sure that your spelling, punctuation and grammar are accurate. In addition, it will be good if you can actually use connectors to link up your points while writing so that the writing will be fluent and it will also sound more authentic compared to just a mere listing of points. So now let's just take a look at an example and let me run through the process of doing your situational writing with you. So step 1, you have to make sure that you read the stimulus very carefully. And reading the information does not just begin in the picture, but sometimes even the heading before you even look at the picture counts. So make sure you read every piece of information there. Step 2, look at the task box behind. So in this task box, you will find your P, A, C and W. So in today's example, let's take a read now and see whether you're able to pick out the P, A, C and W. 
So firstly, for P, the purpose, always look out for a sentence that goes something like write an email to somebody or write a letter to somebody because that's where your purpose will usually be found. So over here you can see, write an email to your intended guest speaker to invite him to give a talk to the art club members. And the purpose will be to invite him. To. So highlight that and label it P. Next, the audience, who are you writing to? And you can see your intended guest speaker. So label it A. Now, this, in this particular situation, the name is not given in the task box but you definitely can find it from the stimulus and make sure that you go back to the stimulus and find the name of the person you're writing to very accurately. You can either highlight it over there or you may even add it in as a note in your task box. Next, you have the context. Since you're writing to an intended guest speaker who definitely is not someone close to you, quite clearly, this will be a formal piece of writing. Finally, the W, who is the writer today. And you can see from the first paragraph, you are Edward Lee, the chairman of the art club, Winterville Primary School. So highlight that and label it W. Now with your PACW clearly picked up, you can see that there are some content points that you need to make sure you address. And what are they? So I can see there are four bullet points over there. However, do take note that the number of bullet points may not be equal to the number of content points that you need to give. Allow me to demonstrate that to you. So in the first bullet point, why you have chosen the speaker to give a talk? This is point number one. Next, the topic the speaker should talk about. This is point number two. Then why the topic is chosen? This is point number three. And in the last bullet point, when and where the talk will be held? Hmm, this actually sounds like there will be two particular content points you need to address. And therefore, let's label when as number 4 and where as number 5. So clearly you can see there are 4 bullet points but actually there are 5 content points that you need to address today. So once you have identified these 5, you are not going to start writing straight away. Instead, go back to your stimulus and highlight the relevant answers to each of these points. So as you highlight each of these answers in the relevant points, you are actually allowing yourself to be well prepared before you start your piece of writing. So with everything highlighted clearly, now we are ready to begin. In the next video, we would like to share with you some tips on how you can actually carry out your informal writing successfully. So make sure you stay tuned.